In this example, we're getting a breakaway force when we're pulling up at an angle on this box. So this is a really important point that if you ever have an applied force that's tampering with the vertical direction, so there's a component of this vertical, it's going to change the normal force and that changes friction forces. So let's get into the force analysis. I have the weight, of course, pointing down. That's 49 newtons. I have the normal force pointing up. That's the floor pushing up on the box. But it's not 49 newtons. And we'll get into the details in a second. So I'm just leaving that as an N. Uh, the reason this box may not be moving at first is because friction is opposing the slipping direction. So I'm going to put my static friction back here, pointing to the left. That'll be mu sub s times the normal force. All right, and why don't we actually know the normal force right off the bat? The issue is that this force vector has two components, one pulling to the right. So I'll call that fx, and the other pulling up. So we have to do a non-trivial vertical analysis this time. This little upward component of the applied force is helping the normal force, so the normal force is going to be smaller. So in my vertical direction, so let's write it like this, my y analysis, my upward forces are n plus the y component of the applied force. So that would be F sine 25 degrees. And that's equal to the downward force 49 newtons. In my x analysis, I have pulling to the right F of x, that's F cosine 25. And with any breakaway type of question, we're assuming the static friction force is maxed out. I should have written a little sub max on this because it's only equal to mu s times n if it's maxed out. Okay. So we really have a system of equations here where n and f are the two unknowns. And I'll go ahead and solve for n um, out of the out of the x equation and then plug in to the y equation. Solving for n. And I'm going to go ahead and be casual about the, the numbers here. We're not trying to solve something symbolically in general. So I'm going to go ahead and get a decimal approximation on cosine 25 over mu s. So I get 2.266. Okay, and then we're going to take that n and go into the y equation. So I have 2.266 f. And then f sine 25. Let's just get a decimal approximation on that. Sine 25. So you get 0.423. F equals 49. So we're going to factor out an F here and then divide by the coefficient of F. I think I'll just do all that at once in the calculator. So I have the two coefficients of F, 2.266 plus an additional 0.423. So on the left side, I'll have 2.689 F, and I'm going to do 49 divided by that. Isolate F. We'll try again. 49 divided by my previous answer. And I get 